When I was young, I was scared of the dark. Now, when I see the electricity bill, I'm scared of the lights. Today, I'm going to recap a 2013 action sci-fi film called After Earth. In the not-so-distant future, Earth has faced global devastation due to the dual issues of overpopulation and alterations in climate. An establishment referred to as the Uniting Ranger Corps is initiated to plan an emergency exodus from Earth, leading humanity to a new home on a space settlement named Nova Prime. Given the newfound vulnerability of humans, a species of extraterrestrials known as the Skrell dispatches Ursa's savage creatures bred specifically to exterminate humans. Despite being sightless, these Ursas are capable of locating humans by sensing the pheromones they emit when scared. To counteract this invasion, the Rangers engage the Ursas using their blades and Prime Commander Cypher emerges as a courageous leader, mastering the art of concealing his emotions. By displaying no fear, one can render oneself unseen to the Ursas, a method referred to as ghosting. A few years post-war, Cypher's offspring Kitai enrolls in the Ranger Academy, aspiring to emulate his father. He gives his all even in simple exercises like jogging, striving to demonstrate his uniqueness. Although his academic performance is exemplary, his fieldwork leaves much to be desired, and Kitai's hopes of becoming a Ranger remain unfulfilled. Upon Cypher's return from a mission later that night, Kitai shares his failure to achieve promotion. Cypher, maintaining his typically emotionless demeanor, retorts that Kitai must have been unprepared, justifying the commander's decision. Cypher's interactions with his family are consistently impersonal, even demanding that Kitai address him formally as sir and barking commands at the dinner table. After the meal, Cypher presents his wife Faya with a mission souvenir and announces his intention to retire post his next mission to Ifido, training cadets to work alongside her in administration. Faya welcomes the news, advising Cypher to be more present and affectionate with Kitai, who needs a father figure rather than a military commander. She believes Kitai's insecurity stem from guilt over his sister Senshi's death and his attempts to relate to her through her beloved book, Moby Dick. Taking this to heart, Cypher invites Kitai to accompany him to Yufido. Later, as the crew prepares to depart, Kitai observes a ranger with a missing leg approaching his father to thank him for his heroic act during the Ursus War. Cypher feels it's unwarranted, but the ranger nonetheless calls on his companions to assist him in rising so that he can salute appropriately, a gesture of veneration towards the hero of humanity. As the voyage commences, Kitai attempts to bridge the emotional gap with his father, informing him that he's immersed in reading Moby Dick. Cypher, however, remains terse and distant in his responses, then advises Kitai to rest for the duration of the journey. Feigning compliance, Kitai waits for Cypher to fall asleep before leaving his seat to wander the ship. He stumbles upon a peculiar zone marked with cautionary signs, yet his curiosity propels him inside. The on-duty rangers reprimand him initially, but once they identify him as Cypher's child, they permit him to enter and view the cargo an Ursa intended for instruction in the art of ghosting. A ranger challenges Kitai to approach the Ursa's shell to assess his emotional mastery, but as Kitai draws near, memories of his sister's death at the claws of an Ursa flood back just as he reaches to touch the shell. The Ursa detects his fear and bellows, causing him to recoil. Simultaneously, Cypher awakens, sensing abnormal vibrations, and uses his ring against the ship's wall to detect imminent danger. He urgently instructs the rangers to prepare for trouble and directs Kitai to don his life suit and secure himself in his seat. Rushing to the cockpit, Cypher alerts the pilots of an approaching asteroid storm. Before they can adjust their trajectory, the ship is pummeled by asteroids, resulting in the loss of an engine. Cypher commands the pilots to navigate into the nearest wormhole to reach an alternative destination. They successfully transit the wormhole and emerge near Earth, a place deemed off-limits by law due to its perils. Um, Cypher intends to proceed elsewhere, but the pilots reveal the ship's extensive damage necessitates an immediate landing. 
as the vessel nears Earth's atmosphere, Ikai, it starts to quiver once again, and Kitai's fear escalates. Cypher coaches him to breathe deeply to regain composure. Suddenly, the ship begins to disintegrate, and Cypher is swept away by a gust, leaving Kitai unconscious. Upon awakening, Kitai finds the ship wrecked and goes in search of survivors, only to find all the other rangers deceased. Fortunately, he locates Cypher, still breathing, and stays by his side, awaiting his recovery. Once Cypher regains consciousness, Kitai informs him that the ship's tail, along with the Ursa, is missing. Cypher directs Kitai to the cockpit to retrieve the emergency beacon, but upon attempting to activate it, Kitai realizes that it's inoperative. Subsequently, Kitai places Cypher on a stretcher and transports him to the central computer on the ship, where Cypher examines the inventory, discovering another beacon in the ship's tail section. With both his legs injured, Cypher assigns Kitai the task of locating the tail, which, according to the scanner, lies approximately a hundred kilometers distant. Cypher then equips Kitai with his blade and six canisters of air filtration inhalers to aid in breathing within Earth's inhospitable atmosphere. He further instructs him that the life suit and backpack are outfitted with cameras, allowing Cypher to witness everything Kitai sees. Kitai must proceed with extreme caution, for all life on Earth has evolved to exterminate humans. This thought brings back the painful memory of witnessing his sister's death at the hands of an Ursa. Kitai inquires about the fate of the Ursa they were transporting, to which Cypher responds that although it likely perished in the crash, it's wiser to assume it might still be alive. After utilizing one of the inhalers, Kitai departs the ship, his anxiety heightened by the sight of the lifeless bodies scattered about. Cypher soothes him by instructing him to kneel and focus on the present moment to conquer his fear. As Kitai embarks on his journey, he encounters a variety of unfamiliar animals. While scaling a cliff, a spider on his hand startles him. Upon reaching the summit, he observes birds soaring and cattle grazing, a breathtaking panorama, especially for one who has always dwelled in space. At this juncture, Cypher dispatches several probes to locate the Ursa, cautioning Kitai that the temperatures will plummet at night, making it essential for him to seek one of the many thermal hotspots before darkness falls. Cypher then assesses his own injuries, verifying broken leg bones, and contemplates administering medication for pain relief. However, noticing a warning on the label about potential drowsiness and vision impairment, he is reminded of a past interaction with his daughter Senshi, during which he responded coldly to her excitement about finding an original copy of Moby Dick. A draw rarity in their time. Regretting his earlier behavior, he opts against taking the medication. Soon after, Kitai observes that his suit has turned black. Cypher elucidates that it's outfitted with motion sensors, and the shift to black signals the approach of a living entity. Abruptly, a sizable baboon emerges from the woodland, and Cypher advises Kitai to remain motionless. Kitai, however, chooses to hurl a rock to frighten it away, inadvertently provoking an entire troop of baboons who retaliate by pelting rocks at him. Kitai flees as swiftly as he can, with Cypher directing him towards the closest river to deter the pursuing baboons. Kitai hastily traverses the river, and though the baboons have ceased their pursuit, his anxiety and fear persist, causing him to continue running with his blade drawn. Cypher must shout at him to halt and take a kneeling position to regain his composure. At this juncture, Cypher detects toxins in Kitai's bloodstream, prompting him to instruct his son to inspect his body. Kitai finds a leech affixed to his hand and quickly removes it, but the toxin remains within his system. Cypher directs him to administer the antidote, and as Kitai's sensation in his hands begins to wane, he must throw his body onto the needle to inject it, subsequently falling unconscious. Hours later, noting the dropping temperature, Cypher rouses Kitai to find a hot spot located ten kilometers away. As Kitai sprints towards it, Cypher learns from the computer that he requires an arterial shunt to treat his leg injury. Once more, he declines medication and endures the painful procedure. 
During this time, he reflects upon Senshi's 19th birthday, a celebration he could only observe through a screen due to his mission duties. After persistent pleading, Cypher agreed to blow out her candles, a task ultimately performed by a younger Kitai. Upon reaching the hotspot, Kitai examines his equipment and finds two inhalers damaged. Though he deceives his father, claiming all are intact, Cypher observes a reaction on the screen that suggests a lie, but remains silent. As rain falls, Kitai takes shelter beneath a tree, seizing the opportunity to question his father about his ability to ghost during the war. Cypher recounts how an Ursa once impaled him with its pincer, and as they tumbled into a river, he accepted his impending death. At that moment, the Ursa's pincer withdrew as it could no longer detect him. Cypher realized that fear, although closely linked to anger, was an illusion tied to future uncertainties. The following morning, Cypher directs Kitai to a waterfall where the probes have detected intriguing readings. Along the way, Kitai encounters a mound of deceased monkeys, evidence of a greater peril. Once at the waterfall, Cypher instructs Kitai to review his inventory, and Kitai attempts to lie once more about the inhalers. Cypher exposes his falsehood and calculates that Kitai cannot complete the mission without the inhalers, commanding him to abort. Kitai's thoughts turn to his sister's death, a memory he does not wish to relive with his father. Defiantly, he informs Cypher that he will not be a coward again, going so far as to label Cypher the true coward for failing to protect his family when the Ursa assaulted their home. Cypher dismisses Kitai's defiant words, firmly insisting that he should turn back. But Kitai disregards his father's command and leaps off the falls, utilizing his suit to glide through the air. At this instant, a gigantic condor appears giving chase, and Kitai attempts to evade it by taking cover behind the waterfall. The condor, swift in flight, attacks Kitai as he emerges, causing him to lose consciousness and all communication with Cypher. Kitai later awakens in the condor's nest, surrounded by its offspring. Attempting to slip away unnoticed, he is interrupted by the sudden arrival of several lions, hungry and attempting to invade the nest. The condor fights back, and Kitai aids by forcing one lion out and watching the condor snatch another. Faced with the third lion, Kitai resorts to his blade, cutting through the ground to cause the lion to fall rather than engage in combat. After the lions are dispatched, Kitai departs the nest, grief-stricken, to see the condor mourning its lost chicks. Subsequently, Kitai discovers that his communicator is damaged and he cannot reach his father. Back on the ship, Cypher views images captured by drones that reveal the bodies of rangers suspended from a tree, indicating that the Ursa is on the loose. Resigned, he records a somber message for his wife stating that he has lost their son. Meanwhile, Kitai continues through the forest and takes refuge in a cave to escape the chilling night. Inside, he encounters ancient drawings left by cavemen and narrowly evades menacing serpents. Evaluating his remaining distance and supplies, Kitai recognizes that his odds are slim but resolves to press on. The next day, as he exits the cave, he notices the condor shadowing him. Fearing an attack, he flees soon finding himself forced to use his final inhaler. Later, Kitai constructs a small raft to navigate down the river. During a restful nap, he dreams of his sister, Senshi, and tries to explain that he nearly risked his life to help her on the day of her death. Senshi expresses disbelief but reassurance, believing he made the correct choice. She also surmises that Cypher harbors self-directed anger over the incident. Kitai attempts to recite Moby Dick to prove he's been reading it, but Senshi's scream awakens him, and he realizes the raft has reached land. With temperatures plummeting, Kitai hastens to find a hot spot, but collapses, unconscious, surrounded by freezing plants. As he drifts into darkness, he anticipates death, but awakens to find warmth provided by the now-deceased condor. A final act of gratitude for Kitai's defense of its chicks. After expressing thanks, 
Kitai persists on his journey, struggling to breathe but spurred on by discovering a fragment of the ship on the ground, a sign that inspires him to continue. Shortly afterward, Kitai stumbles upon the ship's tail, where he eagerly retrieves additional inhalers and a fresh blade. He inspects the surroundings and discovers the Ursa's shell is ajar, evidence that the creature has escaped. Meanwhile, on the ship, Cypher dreams of a young Kitai presenting him with his blade, but he is jolted awake by Kitai's voice over a newly found communicator and beacon in the ship's tail. Cypher attempts to respond, but Kitai cannot hear him due to being in the black zone. Unaware of this obstacle, Kitai attempts to use the beacon but fails, leading to a moment of frustration and desperation. Soon he recalls his father's guidance, calming himself by taking the knee, and he discerns that uh, local interference is blocking the signal, determining that scaling the nearby volcano should enable beacon activation without hindrance. En route to the volcano, uh, Kitai encounters a ranger's corpse and the intimidating presence of the Ursa left as a warning to arouse his fear and release pheromones. Resolute, Kitai proceeds until he reaches the volcano's base, where another attempt to launch the beacon proves unsuccessful. Back on the ship, Cypher identifies the Ursa on his scanner and anxiously urges Kitai to act quickly. Entering a cave in search of a path to the volcano's summit, Kitai comes face to face with the lurking Ursa. It lunges at him, but becomes temporarily pinned under fallen rocks, allowing Kitai to flee as the Ursa extricates itself. Pursued, Kitai hides in a water-filled crevice while back on the ship ciphers computer malfunctions, disconnecting him from medical treatment and causing his consciousness to wane. In the meantime, Kitai swims towards an illuminated exit, resurfacing into a pit as he climbs towards the volcano's peak. The Ursa leaps from the water, seizing Kitai's foot. He kicks the beast back into the water and completes his climb, only to face another assault from the Ursa as he attempts to activate the beacon. Thrown against rocks and disarmed, Kitai's thoughts drift to memories of Senshi's protection and Cypher's wisdom. These reflections empower him to master his fear, attaining the state of ghosting rendering him undetectable to the Ursa. Seizing this advantage, Kitai strikes the confused creature with his blade, landing several decisive blows to vanquish it. Cypher watches this triumphant moment before succumbing to unconsciousness. Subsequently, Kitai successfully fires the beacon, and within hours, rangers arrive for their rescue. Concerned for his father's well-being but finding him alive, Kitai is met with a respectful salute from Cypher, acknowledging his courage. However, Kitai forgoes formality, embracing his father and expressing a desire to work with his mother. For the first time, Cypher reciprocates the embrace, admitting his own wish to retire. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button. And if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.